This is the fourth uh, Sunday uh, that we're focusing on Jonah. There's four chapters in the book, so this is the fourth, fourth week, and um, this is the culminating week. So in Eastern Europe, it was a tradition to build pulpits in the shape of an upright whale. First of all, try to picture that. Um, this, is, this is to be on the agenda for the trustees. Uh, as somebody said, first of all, we need a pulpit, but uh, at any rate, you come in the tail of the whale, you climb up steps inside the whale, and you come out to preach, out the, out the mouth of the whale to preach. Um, so, this is the climax of the story, as we said. Uh, we have, first of all, this, remember God forgives Nineveh, and the king puts on sackcloth and ashes and proclaims, that everybody should do that, which means they're repenting, they're sorry for their sins. Even the animals do that. Um, animals have a big part in Jonah, you know. Uh, so then Jonah doesn't like that. So one of the things is to picture Jonah this morning sitting by himself. I kind of picture him sitting over there watching us, you know, kind of looking out and seeing uh, what went on and, and give, having his own view of that. So, um, as we heard, this is about Jonah's anger, right? Uh, Jonah's anger. So he's brooding, he's quarreling, he's angry, he's in a funk. What puts you in a funk? Uh, anger's probably one of them, right? Here's a guy in the, in the funk. So, maybe, did he have reason to be angry? Um, didn't come out the way he thought it would, the way he thought it should. When we're angry, we kind of lose ourselves. We're, it's not a thinking. Anger isn't a thinking. It uh, doesn't come out of thought. I think I'm going to get angry. We don't do that. We just, we just erupt. You know, it comes from that deeper place. It comes from that emotional place, uh, that reactive place. Uh, not from our heads. So Jonah knew this about God. He said he was a prophet, you know, so, right? He knew something about God. So he knew God was going to, you know, likely do something here, help, you know, do something unexpected. He knew it in his head. He didn't know it in his guts. And so it kind of triggered him. Um, there's times when anger is appropriate and needed. Anger is, can, is a good, can be a good thing. You know, we should not, remember the Bible says not to let the sun go down on our anger. So it's, it's, a, it's not to hold on to it. That's the piece that we're, we want to, be thinking about today or be aware of today. Uh, it's not being angry. Anger is appropriate and needed sometimes. Now, there's situations that, that where we need to be stepping up. People need to hear where we're coming from. They need to know what's in our hearts and in our guts, right, about what uh, maybe something that has, that's unjust, something that's um, not right, something that, that we need to speak to. So anger in itself uh, can be good. But when we nurse our anger, you know, when we hold on to it, when we, you know, allow it to continue to, to fester in us, uh, as, as Jonah sitting over there is doing, right? Um, letting it fester. So I'm going to talk about anger boxes this morning. Think about anger boxes. Anger, you know, anger puts us in a box. You ever feel that when you're really angry? It's like you don't even know whatever else is going on out there. You're just focused on that. You kind of get put into a, you put yourself into a box. So here's, here's different boxes, four boxes. The first box is the better than box. You know, I'm better than whoever. I'm smarter. You know, I have more skills. I'm, you know, when we're out on the highway, when we're on the beltway and people are driving like maniacs, we're better than that. We don't do that until we do it. But anyway, we, we, we don't drive like they do. We're not that bad. Or those, those uh, motorcycles that cut in and out. And they're crazy people. What are they doing? Uh, the better than box. That's one of the boxes. In the better than box, we argue that we're smarter than other people. You know, we have it more together. Then the second box is the flip side of the better than box, which is the worse than box. Worse than box. Now, in the worse than box, we hold the view that 
we don't have something that other people have. You know, other people have this or that. You know, other people have had it better in life. They haven't had what I've had. You know, they've, they've, something has gone better for other people. And when they were handing out gifts somewhere, we didn't get them. So we're in the worse than box. Um, in the worse than box, we believe there's something wrong with us. You know, there's something defective. There's something missing. Some of us have that. And when incidences happen, when we're triggered, we go to the worst that, oh, well, that exp that's, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that I'm in the worst than box. The third box is the must be seen as box. So these are the behaviors we think are hidden, but other people actually see them. <laughs> they may, we don't even know that they see them until they point them out to us. And when that happens, we erupt. We don't, want to be, we don't want those things to be seen. You know, we wanna, we, we're used to holding a certain view of ourselves, and when somebody points something out, you know, we don't like it. So uh, that's the must-be-seen-as box. And then the fourth box is the I deserve box. So I deserve is where... You know, I know this one. When I say that something hurtful because I'm holding on to something from the past, I haven't let go of it. Um, you know, there's, there's something that I haven't forgiven, something that I haven't dealt with. Somebody, you know, it, it comes in somewhere where, um, you know, I deserve to be angry at this person because of what's gone on. In the I deserve box, we justify our anger we justify it by all of our experiences. It's because of this, 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 and this, and this, so I get to be angry. You know, I get to act this way. I, you know, this is why I, I am being this way. That's the I deserve box. So all of these boxes are common to us in a certain, in, in, at, at different times, different experiences, different times in our lives. We live into one or more of these boxes, uh, but we carry them with us. When uh, some familiar chord is struck, we go into one, you know, uh, and the boxes are, are familiar. Uh, we only allow information in which justifies the box. So we're cutting ourselves off from what's going on, from what's really happening why we hold on to them. But we can allow ourselves to be cracked open so that they no longer hold us, so they no longer keep us back. So let's think about Jonah and these four boxes. Jonah and the four boxes. He's uncomfortably sitting over there in his box. Let's think about this. The better than box, of course, he and the, the people, the Israelite people are better than the Ninevites. Better than box. You know, this is why, this is why the, I can be angry. It's because I'm, we're better than they are. Second, the worst than box. I knew God was going to do this. This always happens. <laughs> you know, it's the way it always goes. I always lose out. God does something that I don't like. Worse than box. Or the must be seen as box. Don't you think sitting over there by himself, up there, pouting, drawing attention to himself, kind of, uh, you know, kind of showy? That's the must be seen as box. And then there's the I deserve box. I deserve to die, says Jonah. You can be pretty dramatic in, the, in that box, in the I deserve box. That's a dramatic box. I deserve something. So when anger comes on, when you, when you go into that place, when you go into that automatic, you know, you know switch is flicked, flicked place, consider whether, are, are we standing up for something that we need to stand up for? There's times to do that. Sometimes we need to show what's really going on inside of us. Consider that. Are we standing for something that needs to be stood for, for a godly value, for something that is, is, is coming from the right place? Or are we coming from our box place? You know, are we, is, this, is this just another way to, 
to justify how we react in certain situations. Um, when we see each other through, through the boxes, we sentence, each other, we sentence ourselves to living in a boxed-in world. Are you ready to allow God to crack you open, to crack open your box? Think about your box this morning. You know, are you, you going to let God open that one up? So that's the first place that gets us into a funk is anger. We can really see that with Jonah. The second one is quarreling with God. A lot of that going on with Jonah and God. You ever quarrel with God? I kind of hope you do. Because that, that's actually a good, I think it's a good thing to quarrel with God. I sometimes hear people feeling guilty because they, they, they question, they, they struggle with things, but half of the Psalms are about quarreling with God. And when you look through the Bible, it's one after another has quarreled with God. I mean, is Moses, Peter, you know, quarreling with God is, is, is a time-honored institution, shall we say, enterprise. It's, being, it's when we're being honest. You know, God wants us to be honest. So, God, why are you doing this? What's going on? What am I supposed to get from this? How am I going to learn? That's how we get through to the other side, is the quarreling, you know, that, that wrestling gets us through to the other side of what might be going on here. So there's times when God doesn't work the way God, we want God to work. Do we have an amen? We all have that, right? Don't we all have that? times we sit in disbelief. So, are we ready to allow God to love our enemies? Are we ready to allow God to love God's enemies? Those, these are hard, this is a hard place for us. Jesus, on the, at the Sermon on the Mount, said, you have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to this, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Nineveh did a lot of harm to Israel. You know, they, were, they were the nasty empire. Jonah might have been sent as an agent of rep- retribution. You know, I'm going to go and get you. God's sending, you to, God's sending Jonah to do you in. We could understand that. But that's really not what God is doing in this, in this situation. Right? God is sending Jonah to do something else. He becomes an agent of salvation, not retribution. He's an emissary of salvation to a world that was dark and full of sin and shame and you know, hatred. Humbled by God, Jonah actually does what he needs to do. Um, so it can put us in a funk when we're wrestling with God, or maybe it's even more when we don't wrestle with God and we should. <laughs> you know, when we haven't taken that to prayer, when we haven't taken that, that place of, God, why are you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Those are the prayers to take to God. And thirdly, the third way we get into our funks is when we have a story and we're sticking to it. Our story, one story. So Chiamanda Adichie is a young author from Nigeria. It's a picture of her. She's written some acclaimed books. She studied at Hopkins, uh, got a PhD there. She got an award to study at Harvard. She's been on TED Talks. You can look her up on the TED Talk. She has a wonderful TED Talk there. She talks about uh, uh, the danger of a single story. That's one of her talks, danger of a single story. So she's in Nigeria, and she says, all the books I read in Nigeria were about life in England, because that's what the book, the books were all from England. So she read about people drinking ginger beer, (laughs) uh, wearing ponytails, eating apples, and talking incessantly about the weather. That's what she thought books were. That's what books do. They talk about those things. And so she thought that's what 
she needed to be doing if she was going to write a book. Um, she came to this country. She was in school, had a roommate, and she says, my roommate in college was surprised that I could speak English as well as I did, that my tribal music turned out to be Mariah Carey, <laughs> and she could use a computer. So all those things. She says, it was a very nice roommate, but she had a single story about me as a Nigerian. And she said that didn't really come through to her too much until she went to Mexico. And she realized that she had a single story about Mexicans that had to do with Mexicans being, you know, lazy and, you know, kind of the, the stereotypical view of Mexican immigrants. And she says, I realized I had that view of them when I was there. Uh, and I had, to, I had that single story that needed to be shifted to, to more than one story. Uh, when we're in that one story, we're, we're talking about where we see people's differences. We don't see what is similar. Uh, we talk about, uh, stere we come from stereotypes. So we think about our story being the story. So part of this message in Jonah may be that it isn't our story as the story. It may be a bar larger story that includes more than one approach. So she, uh, Chiamanda Adichie talks about um, Rudyard Kipling saying that African children were half devil and half child. That's the danger of a single story. That was the story. Needed to be shifted. We need to shift our single stories. We need to become aware that it's a story that we're telling ourselves. Our story doesn't mean that it's the bigger story. It isn't what's really going on. It's our story about it. So the message of Jonah, uh, he had a, had a single story about God, didn't he? he? He, you know, knew something about God, and he had his story about how God is supposed to be. God is merciful and gracious to those who deserve it. We can get, get into that story, too. We, that we, we Yes, people deserve something that they deserve, not what they don't deserve. You know, we struggle with every time somebody gets something we don't think they deserve. God sends Jonah to Nineveh, not Jerusalem, not the people who are already included in that story. But he sends them to the center of the enemy empire. So Jonah's task is to be a forerunner of Jesus, whose message is universal, and Paul, whose message was to the Gentiles. People have free will. People are, this, the world, we are not, you know, uh, this is not a fatalistic approach to living. There's potential. The cycles of revenge can be stopped. The stories can be changed. The boxes can be cracked open. We don't have, it's not too late to do that. It's not too late for you or me, no matter where we are in the process. We might have been holding on to our box for a long time. We might have been holding on to our story for a long time. We may be wrestling and, and struggling with God for, for years, some of us. We don't have to stay there. We don't have to stay in those places that keep us walled off in our well-worn boxes. Jesus did this all the time. You know, think about his, his parables, his parables of the, of the, of the, uh, the banquet. You know? The banquet where uh, there's a table, there's, there's a setting for all of us. You know, he, he talks about um, going out and inviting the uninvited, you know, the people that weren't on the list. It didn't make the list for whatever reason, didn't make our list. Including the poor, the crippled, the blind. Come in so my house may be filled. Jesus' kingdom was a vision like God and Nineveh. You know, like Israel and Nineveh. Together. 
Jesus even mentions Jonah in his teaching. He's saying that the sign of Jonah is the wide-open, multi-storied message of grace. Wider than we care to make it. James Finley was a student of Thomas Merton, and he said, hell is being stuck where we are. God is continually awakening us to God. God is continually inviting us to step out of those boxes, cracking them open. So the story of Jonah has an unusual ending. You know, the, jo- the book of Jonah, it ends with a question mark. It ends with a question. It's the only book that does that. You know, it's, we, I mean, the question within the story is, what's Jonah going to do? Is he going to stay sitting over there, watching, brooding, in his box, with his story, quarreling with God? Or is he going to find a way? Is he, is he going to allow God to break him open? Is he going to come down from his perch and join, you know, the rest of us, the rest of people, join the, the larger community? Is he going to hear that? There's a tension in the story. You know, we don't like it in a way because we wish it, it, would, it was coming to a, a, a nice conclusion. We don't have that conclusion. So it's, it's because I, a couple of things. I, we, we're the conclusion. We're the ones who are being asked the question, what are we going to do when we're in our boxes, when we're in our quarreling places, when we're in our single story? Are we going to allow something to shift in us or are we going to just stay there? Are we going to allow Jesus to come in with Jesus' story? Jesus is giving us the answer. Jesus is opening us to the wider picture. Jesus isn't just affirming our, our stereotypes. Jesus is, is always helping us step out of those. Can we live with God being God? Doing what God does, which is forgive, reconcile, include, offer grace? Does Jonah stomp angrily back to Joppa and book another trip to Tarshish? going to get there one day, you know, I'm going to run away, or is he going to say, you know what, I'm learning something here. I don't have to keep doing what I've always done. Do we allow our questions to turn to wonder? I love that phrase. Allow your questions to turn to wonder, to wonder and awe, rather than into, you know, self-fulfilling prophecies. Just back to where we've always been. That's what's in front of us. Let us pray. God, we're so grateful to be here. Grateful for the message of Jonah that we've had these weeks. For how he speaks for us. Certainly is a mirror for a lot of our experience in life and with you, God. So God, help us to learn what you want us to learn here. Help us to to find the ways, your ways, you're opening new doors. You're, you're, You're providing the cracks. Help us to move through those cracks into the places where you want us to be, you want us to live. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.